Thank you for giving us this possibility to have this uh, conversation with you, Norman. And uh, I am very excited to hear your story about your, your spirituality, what you experienced in your life, because uh, well, I always uh, very much look up on you like, a, like an elder, very elder brother, or like a spiritual grandfather to me somehow. And it's really wonderful uh, for me to see you. And, and I have lots of questions always in my head and I always wish to hear in uh, details your, your story that um, I, I know you now for four years, but I could never get the chance to have this conversation with you that uh, once you also were young, <laughs> like I was once, and, uh, and how, how did you become interested in spirituality at all? And how did you come on this path? And how did you hear about Master Kirpal? How did it all right. go for you? Yes. Please tell us everything. Well, uh, that's interesting questions. <laughs> and thank you for the feelings about our connections and uh, it, it's amazing that you find my uh, life exciting because it, it isn't really that exciting except what is exciting about it is finding the path of spirituality and uh, uh, I'm just an ordinary person, I'm probably old, grey, full of sleep, uh, lost the mobility, 90 years of age but the, the bonus was finding the path of spirituality, the path of the masters. How beautiful, how wonderful was that initial step. And I was led to it by a book by Yogananda, and uh, I read that book, and it's so interesting, so inviting into this field of spirituality that I thought I'd like to investigate it. And it was in 1963 that uh, uh, I heard that uh, a master was coming to London to give a little talk at the YMCA, and uh, it was Master Kapow. And he was, at that time, was a president of the World Federation of Religion. And so he was propagating work which was to unify religions. So everything was right. Here we've got a, a spiritual master from the East who was revered by the West because of his uh, talk on unity mm -hmm. with religions. So every religion was involved, nobody was debarred from it. And so I thought, how inviting that was. I'll go down and see this master because I was interested. And, uh, uh, and that happened, I went down. And uh, my initial reaction was a, a wonderful soul here. And, and what a, a ma truly magnetic personality, magnetic in the terms of the pull. If you get iron filings and a magnet, the filings are pulled towards the yes, yes. pole of the magnet, but he was a personality of that uh, ilk, that greatness. He had that quiet radiance and fluid eyes, uh, and yet he also had that magnetic pull. And so you, you felt comfortable, you wanted to be with him. <laughs> and uh, he had that way of looking, uh, 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 it, we shook hands initially, uh, I mustn't forget that because that was so friendly, so warm and so tender, and, and yet for a big man so gentle and yet it held me for such seemingly a long time. And the interesting thing was, of course, in 63, uh, two men holding hands for a long time <laughs> it seemed a little bit disquieting, you know. So, uh, in my ignorance, not realising he's a spiritual great, I, I let my hand free. And uh, so I let go of the master. He didn't let go of me. Which later, I find, I think, is rather symbolic. Because... As you know, the Master's never let us go. And uh, uh, as I took my hand away from his, his hand dropped down, just like it was a dead man. It must have been somewhere else, out of the body. It, it wasn't a normal reaction. So his consciousness, even uh, 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 as innocent as I was, it wasn't uh, uh, normal seeing a spiritual giant that, that could leave the present in his consciousness, which he did, you see. And as I was saying, 
we sat down and listened to his talk of unification of religions. But he was also teaching us, educating us, because none of us had these spiritual truths laid so bare before us that we could absorb so readily. And uh, uh, explaining that all the prophets, in their wisdom and originally, taught the same path. The path, path of uh, sort of Shabd Yoga. It may not be named by that, by Buddha or these other people, but it was exactly the same path, the same uh, pointers, the same milestones, the same type of meditation and the connection with uh, the universal spirit, the Nam, the Word, the Shabd, the Udgit, the living water, the bread of life, but excitingly how he talked about the bread of life and that you can eat the bread, that you can talk about it, but that's not the same as eating it. Mm -hmm. And here we've got religious truth being exposed, that you can actually eat and taste the bread of life, the living water, the Holy Spirit. So that was a revelation in itself, educationally, so that's mm -hmm. how Master Kapo was, in that wonderful, fruitful, and yet he gave something as well, because as he, as he looked round the audience gathered there, his eyes were truly wonderful, magnificent, blissful, joyous, and he imparted it. And here, here was a new experience. Boy, uh, he swept the audience with his fluid eyes, never seen before such eyes. And we all felt the benefit of it. And you, when his eyes left you, you, you thought, I want him to come back and look at me. Please, you know, mentally. <laughs> sound may sound silly, but that's how I was in 1963. And so, as, as you can gather, I was uh, entranced by this great, wonderful, quiet, yet radiant personality. And I think everybody felt the same way, really wasn't a big audience, and, uh, and so we enjoyed the presence of the spiritual the great So, And as he left, uh, the other thing was the magnetic pull was still there. When Master Kapal left, I'd only met him for that brief time, but as he left, I wanted to go with him. I wanted to leave the room. So what happened after that? So, how did it continue? So, so, so that, that, that was a wonderful revelation and uh, gave me plenty to think about it. And, but I got one of the leaflet, leaflets and uh, I, I thought more. I want more connection with, with this type of spiritual romance. <laughs> what a joy. It's like a, a, when a new love enters your life. It's like your early days with your first love. <laughs> How wonderful. So uh, I got a leaflet and uh, I started to think about initiation. And of course at that time I was a meat eater. So I had to go through the phase of uh, giving up meat. And, and I also drank and uh, smoked. And so I had to wean myself <laughs> off those... Uh, 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 symptomatic uh, things that you have to get rid of. So there, there we are. So in 1964, uh, I applied to Master Kapal for initiation and, and it happened, you know. It, it, it transmitted it to uh, a Mr. John Rowland, a Welshman. And, uh, and so he came, John Rowland, the, the Welshman, came, the representative, came to my home, uh, not far from this, area and uh, he gave initiation one Sunday morning in Christopher's bedroom, my son's bedroom. <laughs> so, so that was the start of my life's adventure. Wonderful. And uh, did you meet again Master Kirpal in person later on? Yes, I, I, I did meet him later. He came on, on a visit in, uh, in the intervening years, of course, I did practice the science 
uh, the meditation and gave up meat and of course and tried to and did indeed stick to it although it was a rocky start <laughs> and uh, uh, because from such humble beginnings as I was I'm not truly a, a really educated person and uh, I had a sort of bit of a rough upbringing and so I had to slowly make my way into the avenue of respect of spiritual respectability <laughs> So there we are. Uh, anyway, that happened slowly and steadily. As Master said, slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> and of course, spiritual gems come from a spiritual master. And uh, he, he, he decided to come over to England in 1972. And uh, in the meantime, of course, we, I did correspond with Master Kapal, he also kept his finger on the lives of every initiate and his work workload was immense with spiritual letters from his initiates but he, he, he dutifully answered every question that you put to him and he was answering mail all the time you know in his lifetime <laughs> and so I kept this that way and he came to England in 1972 that's the last time I saw him of course because they left the body in 1974 and uh, uh, it was a wonderful decision to make to see him in London and uh, there was a togetherness there and uh, it, it was a wonderful feast that we had with, with Master Kapal, now such a great wonderful universal figure because they did bring a lot of the uh, the strength of the teachings over to the West. So there we are. Uh, and it, it was beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, I shall treasure these memories that you're asking me about <laughs> up to the end, you know. And they, they sustained me in my, shall we say, the lonely years when, I, when there was an interval when there were no masters on the physical plane that were obvious. For the succession. And uh, was there a satsang at the time of Master Kirpal in your area? Could you attend satsang? No. Or you had to do alone the work? I did it alone. Wow. Yes, the, there was no, nobody in the vicinity. So what I did was uh, I had to go down to London for satsang, quite a journey. Mm -hmm. And it was an expensive journey because I wasn't a well paid person. And it was a sacrifice for my wife, Dorothy, with a young child. And so, uh, but Dorothy, my wife, always encouraged me to, and allowed me, <laughs> if you pardon the expression, uh, because we, we, we didn't come to any uh, tug of war about it. She said, yes, you can go. And so, uh, and she always had a photograph herself of Master Kapal. And so uh, I was encouraged really by that. So uh, she had allowed me the free hand of going down and if I had to sat sang there and uh, enjoyed the, the uh, satsang in, in London and uh, derived great benefit, as you do, from satsang, a necessity, a necessity. Uh, but it, it is a life-changing thing and there's no doubt that uh, the world is such a troublesome place that, that we, we are fortunate that, that we found a living master who will accept us and under his guidance we're we're safe really in a sense because if you look at the mathematics of our spiritual lives or the pardon me spirituality of the world uh, with the wheel of 80 with wheel of 84 doesn't it make sense the wheel of 84 human birth how wonderful to get a human birth but Minus 84 lakhs, human birth, minus a master. What happens? 84 lakhs, continuing. Mathematics, yes. Mathematics with a master, 84 lakhs. Human birth, right? Master's grace, initiation. Next, higher to the one, to the Godhead, to the over-self. 
the mathematics is simple, which is preferable. Mm-hmm. But we don't look at it always in that sort of way. I, I accept that, but, but that is it. You know, it's not Einstein's theory. <laughs> no, it's, it's life. It's See, life. It's life in its reality and the beauty. Yes. And uh, what happened after um, you met Master Kirpal in 72, and uh, after that uh, in 74, he left the body. So how was this um, period for you after 72, meeting him again in London? And how did your spirituality go on? Yes, well, that's true. It was a a difficult period then, I think, because uh, uh, initially the shock because uh, uh, and not the realization of course i wasn't so advanced to think that uh, a living master which they describe once a, uh, you you're accepted as an issue of a living master then uh, uh, it, 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 he is your living master and if he leaves the body of course he's still a living master well i haven't fully grasped that but this is true, of course, because it, it's in the course of life you find out that the protection is there, the love is there, the light and sound, if you were tapping into that by the grace of the Master, that's still there. So nothing fades when the Master goes. But the, uh, it, it's a wonderful factor to factor in if, if it was a successor, of course. And there was a little bit of discussion about that and. But out of the discussions and the different revelations from highly placed at Sangis, they, they, they came to the realization there was a successor named uh, Santa Jain. And so it was my good fortune to also to come and see. And uh, well, he came to London actually. And so I, I saw him then, was captivated by the realization that. Master was in new clothes, a new suit, and I met him at Heathrow Airport, mm-hmm. and he, he, he came into the area of the lounge, you know, and all that, and sat down and gathered around him, and what a wonderful moment that Kapal shone through him, and we sat there in trance, no words, <laughs> just happiness, joy, uh, as we are here. <laughs> now, this present day, how you sit round a complete, competent person, spiritual-wise, uh, as a family. And so we enjoyed the, the twosome, really, in a way, because you've got the backup of your original master in his new form. And he was a very pure-looking soul, was uh, Santa Jive, and so sweet and so beautiful, and so simple, like your present master. I'm sorry to go on too long. No, please keep continuing. Please, uh, I, I really enjoy listening to you. And uh, I see you are very lucky because the masters came to you. <laughs> they came to, to your country. So. True, true. It's a very they, lucky they, they, they come to me. But also, I, I was fortunate then with the intro- introduction to uh, Santa Giant. Then I did go to his ashram in Ranisthal. Mm-hmm. Again, an unforgettable, unbelievable experience. It's like going back to the, I suppose, in time, to the days of Christ, because he lived in the desert uh, on a, a rural area, and how he get there, you don't know, <laughs> because it's, it's sand all around. It, they're not signposts saying Master's Ashram or anything like that. No roads. How do they get there? I don't know. It's like a fairy tale, a, a, a van driver getting there, a bus driver. But anyway, we got there, and that's astonishing. Uh, uh, and he lived a simple life in on the farm, you know. So we and stayed there for ten days. And when was it? Which year? What year? What year was that? Well, that must have been uh, eighty, about nineteen eighty, something around mm-hmm. there. Yes, in the 80s that we stayed there and we had a wonderful, wonderful time there. And uh, uh, again, uh, it was 
like being back in time and, and such a rural setting you see it was uh, simple and joyous and we, we ate the simple food that we have here that was made by the savour of uh, uh, satsangas you know <laughs> so everything was blessed and so there we are and uh, with whom did you go at the time uh, did it uh, form a group here of uh, Santa Jai, Singh. Santa Jai. So yeah. could, oh, could yes. you share the path? Yes, there was. And uh, uh, so we used to meet, meet up then uh, in, in the group, yes. Uh, again, we had to go down to London because there wasn't a group up here. You see. But it was fine. That, that's how it has to be. Uh, you've got to go looking and searching and uh, keeping together on the path because there are times when things get difficult in the world it's the age of uh, Carl isn't it the age of the Iron Age uh, difficult age and uh, you do have to keep remembrance of master and so the group is a, a, a helpful factor uh, we can't always do it we need some support really in a way uh, otherwise the, the world seems to pull at you so much so it's a replenishing uh, uh, the spiritual life in a sense, additive, which, which you need, you know, like a tonic. When you're not well and you get a little tonic, <laughs> it just boosts you. Yeah. And so that's replenishing uh, and a hitch around your spiritual side to your life. And uh, how was uh, your relationship with uh, Santa Jai Singh? Or or how much was it different uh, uh, to the relation with Master Kirpa? Mm. Because Master Kirpa you met uh, twice in London. Yes. And Sanji you went to see us at his own ashram. And so how was it different to relate to them? Because you said that it's like uh, the master in his new court. Yeah. But, uh, but still. Uh, oh, in personality. How, how was it? <laughs> how, 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 was... how did you leave this? Yeah, I, I, or how, uh, what did it mean to you? Well, I... I I'm not an analyst, you see, I have to accept. Uh, uh, and I couldn't summarize a master because they're, uh, they're intrinsic, intrinsic diamonds, well polished by God. And there's so many facets of personality and they know how to deal with us. And, and we are just uh, accept master as he is. But it was humorous and it was, uh, Interesting that, that uh, we met in a house in London with Master Kapal and uh, he was giving some parshad and uh, he, he threw me a piece of toffee <laughs> and he liked to throw things at Master Kapal <laughs> and he threw a toffee over and I caught it and he said meditate one hour <laughs> and uh, oh thank you Master and then he, he threw another one, <laughs> so I called that uh, meditate two hours, and then uh, on, which I shouldn't have done, I suppose. He, he was getting ready to throw another one. He said three hours, uh, and I, I, I was sort of taken aback because I couldn't meditate three hours at that time. But I should have taken it and done the three hours. But unfortunately, I've, no. <laughs> But I had the two toffees and I did meditate two hours. <laughs> that was a long time for me then, you see, but I mean, I suppose, uh, like yourselves, uh, it's easier to you. I don't know, I found it fairly difficult to do. Um, it's good to do two hours. <laughs> I'm telling myself that. Well, everything has a beginning. Everything has a beginning, yes, mm. yes. And so, uh, so that was perfect. It, it, it was fun. It was joyous and he captivated you with these little touches, you know. Uh, I think uh, Santa Jai was uh, very much the same, but he would put his arm round Papu, you know. Uh, we looked upon it really as his spiritual son, I'm sure. Uh, he was very affectionate, he was very loving. Very, very gentle person, I feel. Uh, uh, but he, he could be strong too in his approach to meditation. Um, yes, no comparison really, personality wise, uh, but uh, you don't see all the facets of the master's personality, it's, it's what he showed at the time. 
and uh, how would you describe what was uh, the peak for you with Master Kirpal and uh, what was the peak with Sanji? How, how was it for you? How, uh, spiritually speaking, what, what, uh, what is the peak that you could reach with them? What would you, what would you mention as uh, something uh, very valuable or, or important that they could personally give to you? I, I think what, what was important for me with, with Kapal, well, of course everything's important. Everything's symbolic of the spiritual life to do, but it was interesting when he came to London and we, we had a, 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 a satsang meeting in the hotel room and he, he sat on the dais. Uh, this was the second time he came. I, I saw Master Kapal twice, you know, in London 63 and then again, as I mentioned, in uh, 1972. And in the hotel room, he, he, Master Kapal sat on the dais with chairs like I do here and we sat around him of course and uh, my friend and I were together uh, amongst the other friends but my close friend was with me and Master Kapal was facing that way on the chair to the audience there. We were a little bit to the side and uh, So, um, excuse me. Uh, so, so what happened then was, <clears throat> excuse me, I was a bit dry. Um, he, he started to give his talk, and uh, of course, we were, it, 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 but just before he commenced, he said, uh, "Oh, was there anyone here that, that, that came to see me in '63?" And so I put my hand up, but I was the only one that put my hand up. But, but Master Kapal was sitting facing that way. But when he noticed that I was the only one, he turned his chair around on the dais and faced, and it stayed like that the whole talk. And so we, we got the dash. <laughs> and my friend said, oh, we are VIPs. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so what a lovely gesture to an ordinary person like myself. So that's the, a very uh, enduring, loving memory of Master Kapal. How he paid his attention to a, a lowly satsangi like myself <laughs> to give me encouragement. <laughs> yeah. so, so it was worth going again, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, with the jive again, it, it, it's the darshan, you see. I, I think those are the meaningful expressions of master. All masters that are perfect. Uh, being there is parshad. To see a master, the back of a master, the side of a master, parshad, aren't we lucky? But then the fluid parshad, the living direction of, of their attention to us, to pierce our auras and into our soul itself. That, that's wonderful. I, I, I feel that is so beautiful that we are so blessed, so fortunate. Uh, so we must be unified in that belief. I think that's, these are the memories of the Master. And uh, take advantage of them. It, it's the, uh, it's the food of life and something that we need to get through this difficult phase of our being, you know. It's a difficult world. And uh, so it's a continuous joy to be on the path. And uh, because I, I've reached the age that I am, uh, I, I can verify it. I, I, I wish to verify it. The, the path is absolutely good. And, uh, looking from the young end, you might think, well, will I be the? Will it be the same next year, the year after, or ten years' time? Will it be different? No, it'll be better. It improves. It's an improver, like you do with certain foods and things to preserve. It's that sang life and uh, spirituality of the Surat Shab Yoga 
is an improvement to your life every phase of it. Life is difficult. We, we uh, so many hurdles. Family life, illness, uh, work, uh, all these sort of things, disasters, um, worries, sad news. Life's not a bowl of cherries, is it? There's, there's always something. So, so this is the support. We have a master, we have a teachings, and we have the bread of life. And this is what I find. So I wish to verify that to all you dear ones for embarking on this wonderful, wonderful journey through your life. So your life expectancy is yes, it, it's perfect. I've made the right decision. I've looked at the sum. I didn't look at the calculation, but the calculation to come afterward. You realise I've done the right thing. You know, sometimes you may worry your family if they're not initiated might put questions towards you that are difficult to answer, uh, and you may question yourself. Then I've done the right thing, my family, if they're not of the same journey. They are actually. <laughs> They don't know it. And uh, <clears throat> how many times uh, could you meet Sanji? Did you meet him many times personally? Uh, personally, because it was a it was a longer relationship somehow. And yeah, yes, it is a longer relationship. And a longer relationship with Sanji. Yes. Um, well, of course, he, he was always personal. He always recognised you and spoke to you uh, uh, as one of his family. And uh, so we're, we're not strangers like uh, Sirio is. Of course, he adopts you, doesn't he? Uh, so, and that's, that's how uh, Master Diab was. A beautiful, wonderful companion, friend, philosopher, advisor. And if you had any questions, well, you went into the quiet room and talked. He was perfectly happy to help you, even if it was not necessarily relating to your spiritual life. <laughs> which uh, they're still happy to advise you, although that's not what we're there for, but they're concerned about us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, yes, I, all, they're all highlights for the Master. Uh, it's hard to pick anything out uh, other than I mentioned, uh, uh, certainly the, the Pasha of the Master being <laughs> with us. Everything's beautiful at the moment, every moment is captivating. So can we record every moment? Uh, <laughs> every moment is a highlight. Every moment is a joy. Every moment is a credit. There's no debit side to it. The debit is if we can't make it. No. Uh, Sanji left the body in uh, 97 and uh, it's just 20 years ago. So what happened in these 20 years for you? How, how did you take it personally? How did you leave it uh, that after you lost Master Kirpal, then you got Sanji, then, then uh, somehow you lost uh, physically Sanji? Yeah, yes, yeah, true, true. Well, it did affect me, to be honest. Uh, Sanji affected me constantly. He was so wonderful. <clears throat> you like Thank you. I just got a bit dry. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it affected me very considerably. <clears throat> I, I had built a hut in the garden. And of course, I used to meditate there, and uh, one or two friends used to come round, and we used to do the meditation with uh, Kapal in mind and also Sanji. So you have a small ashram? So, well, yes. So, let's be modest, it was just a, a little wood hut that I built. <laughs> uh, that's amplifying it a little bit. Uh, so we were enjoying satsangs there, and of course, when, when Santa Jai left, there was a vacuum, a big vacuum, a big hole, a black hole. 
Sounds like astronomy, doesn't it? <laughs> so, how do we fill that? Well, we couldn't. Although, I have got a living master. So, so what happened there was, I, I did have some grief about this. More, shall we then in couple, because couple's my living master anyway, but I did feel a great sense of loss with Hunter Jive. And we were singing Bachans at the time, as we are now, uh, and I did an unusual thing, I think, the wrong thing, and that is, I never sang after that, you see, <laughs> because I thought, well, what is there worth singing about now with a joyous saint that's left? <laughs> so, uh, so I, I decided I wouldn't sing, so we didn't do any bad jams. So that we, we do, did the meditation, of course. My friend used to come and we'd open uh, the satsang and remembrance of the masters and that was it, there was no singing. I said, no singing, thank you, I'm not joyous about this. So there we are, so we had the satsang that we shared, I'm calling it satsang, because I was requested by Master Kapal, it was all right if I helped other people in a form of satsang. So we, we did enjoy that uh, meeting together, this friend and I, and sometimes more course, uh, but there's no singing. And, uh, <clears throat> and so I, I just had one song and uh, that was uh, Santa Jai left a message saying that he was yeah, writing this bhajan and uh, <clears throat> so I, uh, I couldn't make sense of it in the uh, Indian singing of it. So what I did, I set it to English, and uh, I just sang that, and uh, so, so that was my form of uh, prayer, really, connection, just a sort of a, a grief remembrance. <laughs> Sounds morbid, but it wasn't really, <laughs> but uh, it was just part of how strong I felt uh, about that. I, I don't think I could sing it, but the words... Uh, you'll know the words, I'm sure, because... Yes, yeah, yeah. well, I don't uh, remember all of them, but I remember very well the meaning. Yeah, well, I but put I, my I tune have... to it. <laughs> <laughs> no one should stop my way, I have to go. No one should stop my way, I have to go. Really, I have to go. Send me, happily send me, I have to go to my own home. Send me, happily send me, I have to go to my own home. Whenever a jibe will wish, he will empty this cage. Whenever a jibe will wish, he will empty his cage. No one should stop my way, I have to go. Really, I have to go. Send me, happily, send me. I have to go to my own home. Send me, happily, send me, I have to go to my own This was so touching. <laughs> you, touch, you are touching me. Reminding me. Hopefully forgiving me. Really. Yeah. 
for forgetting so much, but reactivating my memories, sweet memories, beautiful memories, togetherness. But I'm together now with you. <laughs> we are very happy for this to be together. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, and uh, it's also a special year now because it's 2017. So it's just 20 years since Sanji had to go. And uh, so you, you said that uh, it was like a, a vacuum, like a black hole after him. And uh, you were meditating with the others. And did, did I understand well? So you were kind of a group leader to Master Kirpa, so he entrusted you to, to, to do the satsang in his name? Just in my local area. Right. I really wasn't accepting my mantle because there were no couple of issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had to go to London to with uh, Sam Singh. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of Sam Singh. Uh, he was the representative <laughs> for Kapal. And so I, I went down there. And uh, uh, he was a firm adherent to uh, Master Kapal, so he never followed or associated with any other master, really. Uh, but uh, I, I went down there and uh, kept in, in touch with him. And he still rings me today, of course, his brother, Sasaki. Nice. And uh, so, the question again? And that, uh, so now we are just uh, 20 years after yes. Sanji leaving this world that yeah. he had to go. Yes. And um, what happened to you in these 20 years? in your spiritual life, how did you leave it after after you said there was this vacuum and black hole yes, created yes. after Sanji and... Well, well of course, we, uh, I've continued with the practice of St. Mark and uh, uh, of course because it's a necessity uh, and you feel it because as you and I and all of us need a diet breakfast, dinner and tea, <laughs> supper, or maybe more. Uh, I also need the spiritual diet because uh, I'm so attuned to the factor of necessity of the bread of life now that, that without it I'm lost, you know. And there's so much dirt in the world that you, you feel that you have to wash it off, and it does, I think. You're not making any progress, but at least you're not falling back. So that's I find it as a food, and, and it's so joyous to receive food that comes, it's the life force itself which gives you energy, uh, buoyancy in life. When life gets so depressing and hard, then you go and sit in your meditation, and, and you, you derive from it. The Master's in touch through the vibrations of the Holy Nam, and we're tasting it in the sweetness and sometimes the joy and sometimes the love uh, because where else can you get love but from within the soul? We can love a ride on a new car or uh, going out to a new park or historic building or a painting or poetry or birds, music. But it doesn't give you that absolute love. It might be able to look for a, a few seconds, but it's not the sweetness and the highness that they get from the inner love. And occasionally, we are fortunate, the Master, through grace, not through anything, may give us something extra. And uh, occasionally that happens, and then that helps you further on the way. Because I'm sure that uh, we're not ready to receive the amount of love the Master can give us. We, we wouldn't live. It's so intense, Master's love, God's love, if you like, through Master, the, the, the body wouldn't be able to stand it. But what a way to die. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did you go to see other Masters also, Sanji? Uh, yes, of course. Yes, I did. I, I did, actually, because uh, I have that sense of curiosity. And if there are... Uh, a successor and uh, that was hard to attune oneself to because there were one or two names that were mentioned but uh, I did uh, go to see uh, 
the master called Sadhu Ramji uh, in London. And uh, I, I feel that he had something. He seemed a hard nut to crack, if you put it that way, if you understand me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he had something that he could turn on and off. I, don't, I think the real perfect masters don't turn it off. <laughs> So, uh, uh, it was interesting encounters and uh, I was interested in uh, helping the path of spirituality, thinking it helps the path of spirituality, because it keeps your mind focused on your own attunement. Uh, so, it, uh, I'm open-minded in that sense. So, from that flowed the fact that uh, Sidio was, uh, you know, I had an ashram which uh, I, I went to when Sanji was alive and that was, was in, I think it was in 1987. Yes, there was a retreat with Sanji Rivola. So, so I went there and uh, it, it was a beautiful retreat there, rural and uh, wonderfully done. Uh, Master Syria I knew from the days of uh, Sanji visiting the uh, but not familiar with him. I, I knew of him and his wife, his beautiful wife. And uh, so I went to the ashram of Ebola and I had a wonderful time there. And uh, what can I remember about that? Oh, I, I remember that, that Syria seemed to be behind the scenes a lot. That is not evident, except, of course, when they were singing. And then, uh, this was the wonderful thing that I didn't notice at the time, uh, I, 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 was the fact that uh, Sidio did some singing. I don't think the master was singing at that time. He had previously sung. Master uh, Santa Jai had a wonderful voice. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I saw some videos and heard yeah. some recordings. Oh, beautiful voice. Yes. But I think he stopped singing by that time, so he, he wasn't doing it anymore. And so, Master Sirio, Sirio then, uh, I believe, he may have been the Master, who knows, uh, he, he had that encounter with Gopal. Um, but uh, Master Sirio stepped in and, and he sang. But the interesting thing I noticed, I felt, was it wasn't Sirio's voice that came out. It was Santa Jai's voice. It was so identified <laughs> with Santa Jai that he, he sang like him, self perfection. <laughs> Beautiful. That's one memory which I treasure. So, so we, we, we did enjoy that retreat and uh, it, it was good. Uh, with, with moments of tender grace that, that uh, Santa Jai extended towards me personally, I felt. Uh, and these are the moments that you value in a retreat, aren't they? <laughs> So, so it's to you I'm talking, and <laughs> we are just uh, you too. I'm talking to. <laughs> as far as I'm aware. <laughs> I'm used to listening to all your uh, memories. I'm, I'm hope I, I can convey it. <laughs> and um, how was it after that? That uh, that uh, you kept meditating uh, after Sanji. And uh, then by the time there was a, a nice group of Sanji here in the area, so you could share the path with the others. And um, I remember some years ago, uh, Teresa sending me an email that uh, they wanted to come to Rivola to the ashram to, to attend the retreat with Master Sirio to share the sweet remembrance. And uh, so they came, Teresa, Steve, and Elaine. And uh, then the next year they invited the master to represent himself here. And, uh, and give a program and... Yes, yes, that's what I attended that, yes, yes. 
That's very so We've had close links with Teresa, yes, and Steve. Uh, from the early days when we met uh, uh, Santa Joe and Tony, of course, <laughs> uh, down in London. So, <clears throat> and uh, so that there we are. So we're moving more to the present day now in time. In time, but uh, the wonderful thing is that uh, what helps us uh, as a, the Elderly ones, if you like. I call myself elderly now. <laughs> I, I don't think about it, you know, because I'm sat among young people and you revitalise me and I think I'm one of you, you know. <laughs> uh, you, you are, you I'm are. I'm not, I'm you not, are. I'm not. But uh, uh, th th we've got the helping factor of you young ones because you've got the buoyancy, you've got the drive, you, you've got the spring-like love, you spring-like flowers coming up with so much joy, energy and beauty, which you have, you see, you haven't lost, you, there's new arrivals on the scene, so you've got all that going for you. And, and your, that buoyancy and freshness, spring-like flowers, helps us, you know, that around you, that are elderly. <laughs> Keep us going. It's a reciprocal. Well, it's, because, yes, it's, it's reciprocal because then you, the elderly ones, give us such an inspiration. Oh. It's really... <laughs> no, no, we're wrong there. Master's the inspiration. Yes, but, uh, you know, the master is the master, but oh, you yes. see live satsangis who met Master Kirpa and oh, Sanji yes. and yes. has such a spiritual history yeah. that uh, yes. by the time you were sitting in, at Sanji's feet in Rajasthan in 80, yeah. I was just born. Yeah, I know. So Thank you for you. reminding me that I'm history. <laughs> <laughs> so, perhaps you are, you are a history. I'm historic. You are your <laughs> Does that mean antique? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a truly a great inspiration to, to listen to your story and. Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> to see that it's possible to, to really treat the path in a, in a lifetime. And oh, yes, it's wonderful. It well, it's all positive, yeah. It, it, what, what, uh, what is initiation? But, but gifts. Uh, initiation is Christmas time. Christmas has come. <laughs> has it not? What does yeah. it give you? Gifts. Uh, gives you a tray full of gifts. Uh, gifts. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't just give you initiation. What's that? It's just a word. Uh, what does it give you? It gives you light. It gives you sound. It gives you protection. Uh, it, it, it gives you its form when you leave the body at the end of life and protection to the higher realms. It gives you navigation, sat now, if you've heard of sat now in cars, you've got spiritual sat now because it gives you the direction. Only a master can take you there uh, through those higher realms. And so, all that, it, the gifts. Yes. And, and protection in your normal life. You, it won't let you drop down in your uh, standards or anything like that. And it will always protect your honour. Always the masters protect your honour. And all we have to do is very little, really. But if we're in difficult times and it's hard, remembrance for the master. He remembers us, so that again is the concession that we have. Yes, and there's no payment. It's not asking for money. <laughs> it's God's gift. It's love. Through a God-man. Yeah. Sorry to <laughs> go too far on this. So it seems that uh, that you got lots of gifts because. Uh, because uh, you are very lucky somehow, I see that uh, it keeps... When Master always says that when something happens in our life, then somehow it's like a tendency in, in our life that keeps happening. So Master Kirpa came into your country, so you could meet him. Then Sanji also came into your country. <laughs> Master Siri also came. Yes. <laughs> Master came to you, so you are... Oh, well, yes, that's, tr that's true, yes. Uh, we're very fortunate. Uh, 
but we must be very needy as well <laughs> because the masses uh, recognize the need and they've come to our rescue so that's a wonderful factor uh, that they, they've come to help us so much I mean we're just a little place here in, in this little group this little setting jewel in the crown now because here we've got a master coming all the way from Italy in this little, little area here uh, and, and he's not going to the metropolis he's not going to the capital he's not going to London he's coming to this lit, tiny little group here uh, to rescue us it's a rescue mission how wonderful that, that Kapal has looked down upon us Santa Jaib has looked down upon us and Master Sire has looked in on the scene with the aid of his, uh, he's a Gurubuk son of Kapal and the Jaib. Gurubuk son has come to our rescue <laughs> wearing the clothes of a successor you see so and that's important for us uh, uh, but we didn't think we were that important and that, that's how it's turned out that it's come to our rescue. So we are the fortunate ones and, uh, and that's the beauty of masters, they, they come to our rescue in our need, in, in every aspect of our life, invisibly, mostly. I mean this, this is a beauteous occasion that it's come in its form, but all, all Syrios initiates have him in their astral form, in their forehead, and he's with them every day, yes. But then to come as well, physically, it's a bonus. And uh, how do you feel with this fact to again uh, uh, sit uh, in satsang with a living master? So after, after so many years, um, because you said you call yourself elderly, and I am just trying, trying to figure out for myself how, how it will be for me. <laughs> so how, how, how is it for you now? How do you feel with it? What does it mean to you at this uh, present stage? To, to be again with the master in, living master in the satsang? Yeah, well, I don't feel any time. I don't feel, feel that time is involved. Uh, I am you at this moment. I don't feel any time, but of course you're looking at me and I, you see me as I am <laughs> and I see you, you, you too as you are, beauteous, but uh, I don't feel mentally or, you know, at the moment, not even physically that uh, I'm any different from myself, that's because I'm being helped by your attention, yeah. Because you're not looking at me discriminating. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're listening to Kapal's past and uh, uh, said he was present. Yes, yes, yes. Well, so it bridges the gap. Does it not? Sorry? It bridges the gap. Yes, yes, very much. <laughs> For me it's always uh, wonderful. Personally to me, I always feel like this is wonderful to meet you because, well, as you say, it bridges the gap. and. Yeah. And, uh, the old path becomes uh, more live for me, like uh, like talking to oh, me, good. because oh, I myself, I could never meet Master Kirpal, and uh, I never got the chance to meet uh, Sanji, because uh, I was very, very young at the time, he already died, yes. he left this world, yes. and uh, so I got the chance to meet Master Sirio, which is, uh, which is great for me, but uh, you know, I, I see the photos uh, in the ashram, in the meditation room, there are the photos of Baba Savan Singh, Master Kirpal and Sanji, and then there is Master Sirio sitting on the Gaudi. But to me, Master Kirpal is a photograph, and teachings written in a book, and some videos, but when you talk about him throwing the parshad, oh, it, yes. it, it comes, comes like an alive human. Yes. Somehow I, I feel like uh, through your words, sitting there and <laughs> catching the parsha together with you. Yeah, and moving the chair, you know. <laughs> And my friends yeah, say, we're, yes. we're VIPs now, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's some wonderful, wonderful tender moments of remembrance. Yes. Yeah.
So, so it, it's wonderful for us because uh, uh, a retreat is just so reactivating. It, it's like having a, a, a shower bath, you know, or, that revitalizes. You know, you, you feel a bit worn out, a, a bit tired, and you think, oh, I'll go and have a shower. <laughs> so you go and step into the shower and you turn the water on and cold and hot and, you know, you sit there for a while and you feel so buoyant and refreshed. And this is exactly what this is to us. We feel buoyant and refreshed and rejuvenated. And then also, we, we've, we, with the company that we, that we keep, uh, keeping in touch with as well, and also remembrance of the Master through uh, through Syria, obviously. So uh, it's it's all joyous. It's all plus. It's like that refreshing shower. It does us good. We need it. We do need it. And so when we go back home, we're, we're, we're cleansed as well with the dirt of the world. There's been so much of it in the newspapers. and But we're in retreat. Good word. We're in retreat from all these factors. We're in a retreat from the world. Uh, and away from the newspapers and the gossip and uh, uh, all things like that. Common or garden, over the garden wall things. You know, we're away from those. We, we're just concentrated on our spiritual life and the rejuvenating factor of it. Uh, so that's wonderful. We shall have to go away from it. We can't live like this all the time. But we're not meant to anyway, because we have our individual karmas to enact, to work out, to solve satisfactorily as part of our life's bouquet that was handed to us by uh, Cal, if you like. So Master has to work through that. So we have to go to our respective homes and lives and uh, duties and perform them but with Master's grace behind us, round us, above us, everywhere. So we, we can only rely on those factors. We still have some very distressing times, of course, but this path is perfect for that. We helped over the hurdles. So, uh, and plus the fact, uh, it's a learning factor for you, but it's a learning factor for me. Be, uh, you're learning about us and the past and so on, and we're learning from you about the present. And uh, so uh, in a way, that's a present that you're giving to me, you know, because I, I, I'm not as much in the modern world, and uh, I like to meet the modern style of satsangi and person <laughs> and uh, so it's a double whammy isn't it <laughs> <laughs> so we we help each other on the path exactly <laughs> exactly exactly And uh, do you think uh, there is a message that you could give to us? Something else that you could add to everything what you said? What would you tell to the people as a message from Norman who experienced all these things? Well, of course, uh, I, I can't really give them much of a message because they've already done the deed. Uh, the message I have is that uh, I've verified some of the teachings in my life, only in as much as I have not uh, progressed very far on it. I've, I'm on it, uh, but to be honest, I, I'm only an ordinary. So it's like I'm nothing uh, special or out of the ordinary. But it, it, it's so verifiable in this path in your life. I, you, you don't think of it, but you can't get through your life uh, really w without. Uh, the accompaniment of God in it. And, and there are so many helping factors with the Master. 
that it's unbelievable that, that anybody would turn away from uh, initiation if they really considered it. It shows that this is the age of Cal and, uh, and Cal has his way and it shows that the masters have their way of rescue again. They've come to rescue us, not just from uh, this north of England, but, but from the whole situation of creation that he wants us back. But, and this is the only way, and it's, it's only verifiable. I, I find the truth of living here is that the hurdles in life can only be crossed with God's help. And the deeper you can go with that, God's help is with the living master. And uh, as I said, if the living master goes and leaves the body, is still a living master. His presence and his protection and your journey through life is always with that master. Assisted, of course, by the helping factor of the successes and the satsangis that go along with it. Because your satsangi friends die as well. <laughs> so you, you need the influx to keep all this cycle and protection going. And enthusiasm. Because well, well, we could be tempted off the path, I suppose. So that it, it performs the function of this togetherness, to keep us on the path of righteousness. If you want to go <laughs> religious. <laughs> but it's uh, wonderful that uh, in all your life, you could keep the path. You took initiation and you, you kept it. You kept doing your practice. And this is really great because you say, oh, I am an ordinary satsangi, but in reality, I am more and more see that ordinary, in reality, that's the extraordinary. Because the extremes are always going out of track. And this is nice to see that uh, you, could, you could really treat the path in all your life and, and keep it with you. And that how much it uh, made your life more rich. Yes, yes. Oh, that's true, yes. Uh, I, I can't add any more to that. Yeah, it, it's true. Uh, I, as I say, I'm, I'm back to that square one, whereas uh, the realisation comes at the, the end of your life, doesn't it? Uh, but uh, and it, it's also such a, a wonderful helping factor for your family, thinking just to, to me alone, but my family. And, that it, and for all satsangas, all my brothers and sisters and daughters uh, that, that are, uh, come to me or with me in the satsangi groups of life and so on, all the families, they, if not satsangas, of the satsangas are helped by the master. As we know, with, with my dear wife who left the body and the master uh, imparted such helping factors into our difficult times and when it's hard to pray it's hard to meditate it's hard to do anything with those type of hurdles but yet the master's presence and help and through all the nurses and everything else it's God working in all those situations for all such things in everything we do but remembrance is necessary don't, don't place any uh, mesh between the connection. Because that, that's where we can fail if we don't remember. Uh, I, I've tried to remember the master in the life. And uh, that's wonderful grace. The master's remembered us. Thank you, Norman. Thank you. Thank you.